Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Comic Book Weekly, a uh, little sideshow here that I created on our Indie Rundown YouTube channel. It's a little weekly show where all of us nerds and superhero fans and, you know, all of us uh, can be ourselves, man. We can just talk, shoot the shit, you know, hang out, have a nice, relaxed conversation about about what we love. So, uh, got another great guest on today. He's a uh, former guest on our main show as well. He talked with us about last year uh it's been too long we need to get him on the on the main show again at some point but um yeah he's a uh actor writer he does it all man he's chad thaxton hey what's up my brother hey hey <laughs> nice to have you back on the show again yeah. kind of <laughs> well hey no I'm, I'm excited about it thanks for having me in this uh specialized kind of uh specialty way of course, man, of course. I really wanted to get you on to be a part of this because, like I said, I think this is a show that can eventually grow and get some legs. You know, the more viewers we get, the more fans we get, it could turn into a big beast. And, you know, uh, like I told you yesterday when we talked, this is something that it's got so much source material between DC and Marvel and all the other little other brands. You really have, you're really never going to run out of episode ideas with a show like this. So that's, it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, that's super true. Yeah. Well, how, how you been, man? I ain't talked to you in a minute. I've been, I've been good. I've been good. Life is, uh, life is a uh, semi normal these days, but, uh, you know, that doesn't mean we're, we're still not working on working on the dream, right? Of Always course. working on the dream. Of course, man. Of course you got to, man. You got to. Yeah. Um, I know it's been a while since we talked, uh, last I heard you, you were writing some novels. I heard they were going pretty good. And, um, how's the, how's the novelty stuff working out for you? It's, it's, it's good. I, I can't say that it's, it's bad. It's been a little bit, uh, it's, it's rough. Some months are better than others. Um, mm -hmm. and always learning. It's, uh, it's interesting to try and shift from, from a creative mentality to a business one. And you find out real quick, which one you favor and which one you, you know, in the, in the practical sense, it's like, well, I probably need that business mind more than yeah. I need the creative one. But you yeah. can't, you, you can't, if you want, you know, if you want creative success, um, in terms of, in, in, in terms of economics, you've got to do both. Right. Right. little future note to all you, uh, future writers out there who might be listening. But, um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, dude, uh, since you're a writer, have you ever thought about possibly writing like a comic or a superhero story or something like that? Honestly, that's never, that's never hit me. Um, I used to work in a, in a comic book store and there was a particular customer who one day he kind of cornered me. Um, <laughs> he cornered me to, to I, he was talking about writing for comic books and I think Marvel was looking for uh, writer submissions. And he told me he was annoyed by the fact that they didn't want stories about comic book characters. And back then I wasn't doing any kind of writing, but the, the common sense of it, I, I kind of thought, well, they want to know that you can write, not that you can write their characters because they've told and are telling plenty of stories with their characters. They need to know that you can, you have the creative ability to write, period. Right, right. And right. I don't think he quite understood that. He, he yeah. did, he didn't, even though I knew nothing about it, that was, that was my guess. And his response to that was, uh, you can tell when someone's not really listening to what you're telling them because that's not the answer they want. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, I get that sometimes. Um, <laughs> no, that's that. That's interesting though, man. I remember when I was a kid, I, I had a I can't remember the name of it. It was a superhero that I drew. Uh, I think it was like Lightning Man or some shit like that. But um, yeah, no, it's just it's something I've always wondered uh, about you. I was gonna talk to you about it last year. But we got we trailed off with into our main show when we were talking about whatever we were talking about. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, you never know something something pops into your head one day, come up with a superhero. Who knows? Who yeah, knows? you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, there's so many abilities and so many like superpowers you could give somebody, but it's just uh, I think the hardest part is always coming up with a story and all that other good stuff for sure, and villains and everything. But um, yeah, man, so. Uh, I don't know if I talked to you last year uh, after Infinity War. I don't think we ever talked about that. Let me let me get your thoughts real quick on Infinity War. What was that like for you? Um, <laughs> Infinity War was. I had to be very careful. I mean, at this point, there's there's no spoiler. Oh, of course. Alarcy, if, of course. if you haven't seen it, that's on that's on you. Yeah, if you um, haven't seen Infinity War by now, you are no MCU <laughs> fan whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. Um, I oh, did. Man. I did my best 
to not like I stayed away from social networking as much as possible because the Me little too. bit that did kind of leak out mm -hmm. was I was like, no, I don't want to do this because when X-Men 2, the movie showed up, it, the bar had been set so high before I saw it. The movie was ruined for me. Yeah, oh, I was shit. like, this movie's not good. I refuse to let that happen with uh, Infinity War. And in fact, to be honest with you, I don't know how I'll actually do it. I don't want to even see trailers for Endgame. Yeah, the Super. I think the Super Bowl one we got during the Super Bowl well, it was a TV spot, but I think that was enough, man. I don't really think we need another big trailer, dude. We don't. Uh, we've we, had. We're, we're a month and a half away, man. Well, almost mm -hmm. two months if you think about it. But it's like, yeah, we all know what to expect. We all know yep. it's going to be massive. We don't really need another trailer. Nah, and and mm -hmm. we don't. We got we got two teasers, and they were both amazing for being yet, teasers. Yeah. Yet vague as shit. We still don't know what the hell's going on. But I know, that's but what I want. That's what that's I want. What I, that's exactly what I want. I, I don't yeah. want to go into the theater and see, even though it'll be brief, the stuff I've already seen. I, I don't need it. I don't need it. My expectations for this movie are already high. Mm. Showing me trailers. Showing me trailers is not going to make me want to watch it more than the end of Infinity War. Well, dude, did you hear that the directors came out and said uh, a few weeks ago that they said that apparently most of the trailer material they're using is only from like the first 15 or 20 minutes of the movie. I, I and, did. I did yeah. hear about that, but honestly, I don't believe a word Joe and Anthony Russo say anymore. Yeah. It's <laughs> of course, of course, of course, Mr. Of course, Mr. Uh, no, the movie's not called in game, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like guys, the one thing I do believe is they said recently, that the movie is still at three hours long, which is music to my ears. I know. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, but hey, let me ask you this: uh, When you said you you got a little you got a little leakage on Infinity War, what did you hear going in? Oh no no no! Uh, oh, Infinity War. Sorry, it was mostly yeah. about the the end. How people were like, you would see Instagram or Facebook memes where where people were like, the end of Infinity War got me like, and then they'd show like a picture of themselves crying, and oh, I'm like, okay. I was like, okay. I don't, I don't know what this means. Oh shit. Um, yeah. Uh, so you're just expecting while you're watching this, like, okay, what's what's going, what's happening? Right. Okay. At some point, I knew I was like, something emotional is going to happen, and then when it did happen. Could it have hit me harder than it did? I didn't cry. I just like, whoa, right. that was what a great freaking ending. Yeah, um, yeah, but for sure. But I don't want people to because you know, there's a lot of people who are. There's just this weird assumption from from when it comes to the internet. People are like, it's that whole first mentality. They want to show mm -hmm. you how they reacted to something first, and I and I go, I want to say to people, you know, not. Look, even if everyone had the time to go see that movie on opening night, there are not enough theater seats to accommodate everyone. Mm -hmm. There, Therefore, give it at least a week before you go trying to tell everyone how great it is, thinking that somehow you, person X, telling me how amazing it is and that I need to go see it is going to make me want to go see it any more than I already do. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, that makes sense. I, yeah, it's just I, I don't want people hyping things and making the expectation. And the great the great thing is I don't have to get on social networking and have it ruined. Yeah, because, dude, people are so damn quick to yep. ruin shit these days. It's ridiculous. Like, I'll tell you, before Infinity, came, Infinity War came out Thursday, I had tickets with some buddies to see it Thursday night. I believe it was about 10-ish. But I think from in the in the Hollywood premiere was that previous Monday. So I think starting Monday afternoon, like right before the premiere went live, I uh, I got rid of Twitter, Reddit. I didn't get rid of Facebook because you know I need Facebook for you know work related stuff and stuff. Like right. That. But I unfollowed all the Marvel groups. I was I I did my best to get rid of all social media and temporarily block them and unfollow them. And uh, I absolutely went into Infinity War. Not knowing a damn thing, and I think it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. That's great, you know. So the, luckily, I was able to do that. So I'm hoping I can do the same for Endgame because, like I said, with Infinity War, we got those, we got the two trailers, 
in the Super Bowl trailer. And I think the third trailer was a little bit too revealing in a way, but it was still, of course, I know why they do it because they got to market their movie and make their money and hype the fans. But for people like me, it's like, you know, yeah. Especially, it's different with Infinity War because this was like technically part one, but with Endgame, it's like, dude, we all know we, we all know what this movie's gonna be. You don't you don't need to sell me on anything else, dude. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, yeah. So, so hopefully they keep it at that. We don't get another trailer. And you know how right, right when a movie comes out, maybe, maybe a week or two before, they start doing countless TV spots showing a new clip or two and everyone, and it's like, you know, so I'm gonna try my best to avoid all of that. And even if they do come out with a new trailer before then, yeah, I'll probably watch it just to say I did, but I prefer not to. You know, it's like I just I don't whatever, if y'all release it cool, but y'all don't have to. You know, it's right. It's fine. It's fine. Right. But you know, so well hey, before we move on to endgame, man, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh how are you feeling about Captain Marvel? What's your what's your stance on that? <sighs> okay. When I f- saw the first trailer for Captain Marvel, I wasn't I didn't go Oh wow! I didn't even mm-hmm. go. Oh okay. See when I when the first trailer for Black Panther. Oh man. Oh yeah, I, it was sick. It was. I thought Black Panther is gonna do for Marvel what Iron Man did when yeah. it first when it first showed up. Uh, yeah. Captain Marvel did not have that reaction, and then later I see YouTube blowing up with all these videos and all these people with their their opinions about it, and the biggest opinion in all of all is that Brie Larson looks bored. Yeah. And I watched the trailer again, and I see it. And I think maybe that's why I felt underwhelmed. She does not look like she cares. Uh, she's interested or exciting, excited to be there. And here's, here's the funny thing. When she was announced to be Captain Marvel, there were a few images and some press release videos. She looked like she was genuinely... Um, uh, like she liked what was about to happen. Yeah. And uh, I thought, you know what? I don't have another idea who could play Captain Marvel. Uh, sure, Brie Larson, fine. And then the trailers come out and I go, oh, wait a minute. We've made a mistake. Um, mm-hmm. This, this now, and here, but here's the, here's the, the clincher though is Marvel's not dumb. Yeah, yeah. Marvel has been making winners since they started. Um, everything they've done has pretty much been knocked out of the park. Uh, I would say Ant Man, Doctor Strange, those movies. Perfect. Those movies were probably yes, they were fantastic movies. But yeah. I call them. I put them on the lower end of the rest of them, and I I rented those movies. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't I don't need to see those in the theater. I just didn't feel like I needed to. Right. Uh, and maybe it's because they weren't, you know, the big, uh, the big three, but I saw, I saw black Panther in the theater and I will, I will likely see this one in the theater because as we all know, it's going to tie directly into end game somehow. Yeah. But, yeah. but overall I, I agree right now, as far as the trailers go, I tend to agree with all of the other, uh, the other uh, podcasters and comic book uh, YouTubers that it's kind of underwhelming. Yeah. And you can add me to that list. I'm the same way. You know, I have the same type of thought process. It's like, I don't know. I don't know if it's between the, the delivery of her lines, the facial expressions, the body language. She just, you're right. She just looks, she looks like she's just there to make a paycheck in a sense. And I'm not trying to, that might be a little. That might sound a little too harsh, but it just. It, I don't know. It looks different than. It looks like Brie Larson it, trying to play somebody. It doesn't look like Captain Marvel. But here's the thing, though. With me, kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, and I've talked about this many times. Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant Man. I didn't really know too much about those franchises before those movie came out. It's the same thing with Captain Marvel. You know, I. I honestly, I don't really know the history of her, or I've never read her comics. I don't know her lore, stuff like that. So I don't. I don't really know what to expect. You know, all I know is she's a former pilot who gets an ex- an explosion somehow, and she becomes a Kree or some shit. Uh, I, I don't really know too much, so I don't really know what to expect. I don't really know how to judge it. Uh, the only thing that really interests me is that it takes place in the '90s. I thought that was kind of odd. 
Um, but well, yeah, when I saw the first trailer, I was just okay. This okay, you know, hey, it's Marvel. Of course, I've seen every MCU film in theaters, so you know, I'm, of course, I'll be there. But uh, yeah, it's just more so of you know, I'm not so much hype. It's just more so like okay, I'm just I'm ready to check it out, but I'm not you know my expectations are kind of like middle tier right now. So right, right, and and maybe yeah. maybe we will all eat crow. I hope so. Um, I hope so too. I I, I but right now I'm uh, yeah. Like right yeah. now I'm thinking I could wait till this came out on home release. Yeah, that makes sense. But I see where you're coming from too. It's like. Oh shit! This might you might have to see this before you see Endgame. Yes, you know? that's that's my only thing. And here, look, man. Here's out of all the th- out of all the stuff with Captain Marvel. Here's my biggest issue, and I've talked about this many times. But it's always nice to get a fresh new opinion. Um, my whole thing is apparently this movie takes place in the nineties. Uh, Endgame takes place these days. Where where the fuck has she been all these years, dude? That's a, an actually an amazing question. Yeah, and, I, and granted, I know of course they didn't know she was going to have her movie, and you know they they couldn't explain it in the other movies, but they're going to have to find a way to explain it now. Of like, where's she been, man? It's been twenty plus years now. Holy shit! Yeah, and and I don't believe for one second that um, Thanos wouldn't know who she is. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, he has to. She's he, been around for this long, right? He has to know who she is. Um, that's a good point, man. I never thought about it that way. Uh, and, Interesting. And so when we have this, there's this idea right now, the theory is that she's going to come in and just overpower Thanos and she's going to, she's going to beat him where the others couldn't. We're like, I, you know, he, you said you don't know the lore behind yeah. her here. So real quick, we saw Hulk fight Thanos and Thanos destroyed Hulk. Yeah, he got bodied uh, <laughs> real easily. Yeah, he did. Yeah, w- real easily. Yeah. Um, then we see Thor. He throws. Uh, he throws Stormbreaker. Yep. Hits Thanos. Okay, should have gone for the head. All right. Yep. Fine. Fine. So we have that. But that just that that right there says Thor stronger than Hulk, at least with regards to Thanos. Yeah. Here's here's a brief lore, and in, unless it's been retconned somehow, and, and I realize. Uh, movies versus comics. Okay, fine. You, you don't worry about the comics, but but right. unless it got retconned, what I know of Captain Marvel is this. Rogue from the X-Men. Rogue mm-hmm. has super strength and invulnerability and can fly because she touched Captain Marvel for too long. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Rogue okay. takes down Captain Marvel. Thanos takes down Hulk. Lives through Thor Theory goes Captain Marvel is going to decimate Thanos. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. And uh, then we've got the whole, we've been watching these other characters for 10 years. I would rather see Black Widow one-up Thanos uh, or Hawkeye one-up Thanos than Captain Marvel. Yeah. It's like, don't you want to see Cap or Iron Man do it? Yeah, exactly. T- together, like they've been building up towards. Right. Not who's this upstart, this young uppy uh, superhero that comes in and come on. Yeah. It's it, that's what I'm saying, dude. It's just I, I don't I don't know. I really don't know. You know, I, I'm pretty good. I, not good. You know, I'm saying I'm not saying there's any right or wrong way to do it, but I've always been. A big fan of theorizing everything and coming up with speculations, but I truly, I'm truly stumped. I really don't know how they're going to explain where she's been for 20 plus years because she's obviously not. She's not hurt. She's not kidnapped. She's not held hostage because Nick Fury can, you know, fucking page her whenever he wants. So right, she's able to be contacted. So it's like, where, where the hell has she been for all these years, and how is she going to, you know, how's she going to play into this because? Nick Fury's dusted. He's not around anymore. Presuming this movie starts with, you know, after the effects of the decimation, where, how does she come back? Because everyone who's left, to our knowledge, no one knows who she is or that she's around. So I'm just, I'm just like stumped on how she's fitting into the whole end game arc. So uh, she, she's probably going to do a, a Captain America where she's, she was frozen. Something happened, amnesiac. And she, comes yeah. to her senses and then you know <sighs> well that's the, yeah that goes in line with how 
I get, we haven't seen any set photos of Brie Larson on Endgame, but I guess she's going to look the same. So, you know, does she age differently? I mean, or was she? It's, it's just like ugh, it makes it makes your brain kind of hurt a little bit. It it, do, it does. <laughs> um, it, it's not going to stop me from seeing Endgame, obviously. Oh, of course. Um, of course. And the Russos are good storytellers. They're good directors. Mm-hmm. Um, I I trust. Marvel, but I do think that there is a chance. Although, I I, I want to say Captain Marvel will be, probably be the first financial flop for Marvel. But a financial flop for Marvel doesn't mean it bombs. It just means it yeah. doesn't make as much as they expected. However, despite uh, a lot of people and their complaints about. Brie Larson and the character's history and how it's going to work with Endgame. Uh, those of us who were talking about, I'm not going to go. Well, these guys who are saying, I'm not going to go see this, and I'm boycotting this. I'm like, right, why, right. why are you, why are you fronting? You know full well you're going to be in that line for a ticket like everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Have fun being confused when you go watch Endgame because I'm pretty sure, like I said, I'm pretty sure we all need to see this before Endgame comes out. Yes. If for no you know. other reason the. The the dog on end credit scene, yeah, or or even the end of the movie. I mean, who knows, dude? I, I don't. Uh, although I did hear, uh, in the comics, apparently Captain Marvel can time travel. So I don't know if if she's going to be able to do that in the movies. Maybe that's how she shows up. She travels through time. Maybe I don't know. I mean, we could, do we do know that some uh, uh, there are these like I don't know if you've seen these suits. That they're showing yeah. the Avengers in. Yeah, we absolutely. know Scott Lang somehow makes it out of the the quantum realm, and I right. think that's going to play a, a role in this, where you know time doesn't work the same at that size, kind, yeah. kind of a thing. So yeah. it's a three hour movie, and and Captain Marvel is literally just a, a Captain Marvel is going to be a long. Self-contained story, but a long prologue into Endgame. Yeah, I, I think so too. And and you know, like I was telling Troy last week when when we were talking about it, I you know one of the long-running theories that has been going around for Endgame is the Avengers will be finding a way to travel back in time through the quantum realm, probably to try to get the stones at a certain point in time before Thanos can get them. You know, and yes. That sounds extremely confusing, and it could mess up a lot of the the current stuff. But I mean, that's aside from literally walking up to him on the planet and just grabbing the gauntlet from him, which I think would be kind of boring. I think it'd be kind of cool to dabble with time travel a little bit. It could get a little jarring, convoluted, and and all over the place. But I I, I think like like you said, man, I trust the Rus the Russos, and I trust the writers. I think they concocted a pretty pretty solid story, whatever the case may be. They did, they they but, did. Yeah, you I, know I think a lot of it's gonna have to do with time travel. You know what? I'm I'm making a theory right now. Go ahead. Right now, it just came up. It just came to me. Let's uh, hear it, man. Supposedly, Chris Evans, his contract for Captain America is up after this. I think I know where supposedly. you're going with this. So I think I said this last week. People think you know the idea right now is Captain America is gonna die. I don't think so. If time travel is the thing. He's going to get put back into yep. his time because because yep. because Peggy because whatever the reasons he's going to probably say something like I did my job here things are I'm leaving yep. it in good hands bam so he gets a and that'll be actually be a good send off for him dude it's so eerie that you said this because I literally said the same thing last week when me and Troy were talking about this did you really because yeah well I mean I've always honestly dude I've always thought about that because I had heard uh, I was on Reddit one day a while back. Um, I heard people talking about, you know, Cap's going to die, Cap's going to die, and then time travel. It's just kind of like a few people started talking about it, and then I chimed in, and we were all just like, yeah, I don't... Look, man, of course of course they could go the route of there's a big battle at the end of the movie. He sacrifices himself to, you know, maybe kill Thanos or do something. I don't know. You know, I, and if he goes out in a sacrifice... If he goes out in a sacrifice, that's fine. I just hope it's a fitting end to him. But I think I'd, I think it would be more beneficial to his character and his overall arc if you know he finds a way to hey send me back or if they go back and he stays there or i think sending him back would be better you know like one last request you know like uh and then you could get like the last one of the last shots of the movies or even a post credit scene he's he shows up and she's sitting there so i honestly dude with the way they've been teasing the whole Steve Rogers Peggy Carter thing over the years yeah i think you 
I think you kind of have to do that. I, I think it'd be a missed opportunity. I agree. I totally agree. In fact, I think this whole movie is going to flip with what uh, Infinity War did. Infinity War was uh, Iron Man's movie. It was Tony Stark's movie. Right. I think Endgame is going to be Captain America's because yeah, he too. was me not too. in. He he was literally nothing more than a battering ram. Yeah. He yeah. had there was no story for him. Tony yeah, Stark. He was, he was just he was just there. He was there. Tony was there. Iron Man yeah. got his um from of the first Avengers to Infinity War. He got his his story. I mean it, it wasn't a great ending, but there was nowhere else for him to go. He met he met his adversary, he lost. Yeah. That's it. Captain America is just now meeting the adversary at the end of Infinity yeah. War. Yeah. And he didn't... Well, no, I was going to say, well, well, does that beg the question of should Tony Stark have died in the last movie when he, when he got stabbed? Should should that... Because, man, when he got stabbed, I thought that was it. I'm sure we all did. I was like, oh, this, this is it. This, this is how it ends. You know, but... Um, no, I think you're right, man. But, but I do like how they kept him alive because now... Obviously, we're going to get the reunion that we've been waiting for since Civil War, the Tony Steve reunion. It's going to happen, right? Um, so yeah, I, that begs the question too. Like, is is Tony if they you know whether Cap dies or goes back in the past? I'm happy with either or. You know, I'm not going to lean my head on one decision and hope to God it happens and then sure. be disappointed. You know, but it's something I would like to see. It could be a missed opportunity, I think. But either way, I'm sure it'll be fitting for whatever they decide to do with Cap. But Begs the question: Whatever happens to him, does Tony die, or does he retire, have a kid with Pepper, and get married? And but it's like Troy brought up a really good point last week. We were talking. He was like, "There has to be casualties." You know, there you can't you can't keep doing this to where it's all like a happy is like, dude. Someone someone's got to bite the dust in this movie. You know, or we, a couple. We you know? know we know who's not biting the dust. Like right away, we know. Black Panther yeah. sticks around. We all know, the dusted characters, basically. All the dusted characters come back. So, who do we who do we lose if they if they end the Avengers franchise for a long time? Then we can lose people. <laughs> this sounds callous. Uh, we can lose people like <laughs> uh, like War Machine. Yeah, we can yeah. lose War Machine. We can lose. Um, we're not. Uh, we can lose. Hawkeye's expendable. Hawkeye's expendable. We can lose I, Thor. I, see, and that's the thing too. Is like when you say there, there's, there's with all the all these characters, man. It's like the comics. There's so many more stories you could tell with them. Yeah. But from a but from a movie standpoint, it's it it it's different because you got to have stakes. But um, I think with Thor, you know, like uh, we were talking about. How I think after Endgame, the the universe is going to start getting more cosmic and get more uh, universally bigger. So I think I think Thor might I think Thor could stick around, but I don't know. Thor's up in well, the air right now. Jane, I, I don't think Hulk is going anywhere. He could. Uh, he could. Jane. Okay, so Jane, uh, Natalie Portman, the Jane thing. That just kind of got after after Dark World. It was like this isn't a thing anymore. Yeah, Thor no, no. could go because you could see Thor being sent off to go to go be with uh, his father and his brother. Right. If we, right. If, if, if the bet is Loki is done, he is now dead. Yeah, I would like to think so. And Thor and Odin has gone, you know, Odin has said, I'm, I'm my mission is somewhere else. Thor could literally be like, I, I go to join them now. And yeah. that's not bad. Like we don't, eh, we don't like, it's like, eh, but now we don't get Thor anymore, but it's not bad. Yeah. They can. No, I see, I see what you mean, dude. Um, I just really hope that they don't pull. Obviously, I love the MCU. I'm a huge diehard fan, but I, I really hope they don't pull the whole. Oh no, they reset the timeline. Everybody's back. We're all happy. It's a happy ending. It's like, dude, give me some stakes, man. Give me some. Give me some emotions. Give me something. You I know, come I on. I agree with you. I I I hate to say it, um, but I agree with you because well. <laughs> We can't, I mean, in the real, in comics, obviously that's fine. But in the real world, yeah. I mean, yeah. look, uh, Robert Downey Jr., he's not getting any younger. Exactly, exactly. Um, and I'm not saying that he can't do this for, he, he's what, 50? He's in his 50s? Something like that? Early? Yeah, something uh, like that. 
I'm not saying he can't do this till he's, I mean, but by the time he's 57, it's like, does anyone really want to see a 60 year old Tony Stark? Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you're getting at, man. Um, and, and it's a good point. It's like the whole thing with, with Hugh Jackman, Wolverine. It's like, it's, it, it was time to end. It was time to end. He's getting up there. Yeah. He could still play the role, but looking five more years. Cause people are talking about when they bring the X-Men, you know, cause we know, we all know the X-Men are coming to the MCU at some point. Yeah. Could be a couple years, could be a while, but they're coming. But it's like by that time, by the time it happens, dude, that's like probably two, three years. Dude, Hugh Jackman's going to be mid to late fifties. You have to recast him, dude. You cannot pull Hugh Jackman over. If no, you know, it's like I think they need to reboot the entire X Men, brand new, a clean slate. Yep. Get younger, not too younger, not like X Men Apocalypse younger, like in their teens. But I'm talking like, and I was talking to someone about this too. Is like I think they should. I think they should do like the original X Men. You know, start start the team with Xavier, and build the team up, and let the universe grow from there into the MCU. And I don't, yeah, Wolverine is ratings. He he draws money, but you know, I don't think they should do the Fox route and do like Wolverine eccentric shit all the time. It's like focus on the core X Men. You know. Yes. Yes, you I know, agree. But, um, but yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right about that. You know, these actors getting up in age, and well, not all of them. Uh, Thor's still pretty young. He's in his thirties. Yeah. Uh, but um, even even Ruffalo with Hulk, it's like I don't think Universal is going to give the rights up, so we're probably not going to get a standalone Hulk movie again. No. So it's like, where does he go after this? Maybe he bites the dust in this, you know? Maybe. Um, who knows? I agree. Um, I do agree with you though that as as great as it sounds that everybody lives happily, kind of a thing, yeah. it, it would be more impactful if there were losses, and I think it would be even even more impactful if those losses were bigger than just, you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh, General Okoye from Wakanda. Like Exactly, dude, exactly. She's a great character, but if, if that's the, if, if, but as a support character, if like, if those are the losses we get, uh, exactly, exactly. Well, it's like with Thor in Infinity War, when, when Loki and Heimdall get killed, it's like, oh man, that, you know, they're, they're not, leading status but they're important characters and it was like oh shit you know that's we spent all these movies with loki and heimdall to see both of them go out the way they did it was like that's what i want i want i hate to see characters die like that but it's like you need stakes like that you need conflict because it helped thor later on you know i told you you'd die for that it's like right. yes dude i love that type of shit so keep i hate to say it but keep loki and heimdall keep them keep them dead man let them characters rest absolutely you know it don't do the whole bullshit where they go all the way back in time oh everybody's back oh loki you're best come on dude come on it was it was nice yeah you know i mean so i i don't know man it's it's just hard to think about like when when who can bite the dust or not i so, I, I agree it is <laughs> it is yeah. hard to think of that yeah it's it's just a big it's just a big mind fuck man well let, let me let me ask you this uh what are your thoughts on um, what are your thoughts on the future? Like, what what are your thoughts on the Fantastic Four, Deadpool, and X Men joining the fray down the road? I okay, so I've I've only recently started getting a little bit worried because there was a time a few years ago when you had people saying the comic book movies are just it's overblown. That's going to die out soon, and it needs to die out soon. And I got annoyed by that because I thought you're not just saying that a genre needs to go away. You're literally trying to close up a movie studio that is hiring thousands of people. Um, you know, can I, can I counter that real quick? I know you're probably getting to another point, but before, let me, let me counter that real quick. Uh, I think, honestly, in my opinion, I think it's just getting started, dude. We're finally, as fans, and this is obviously for the general public, it's a different story, but for us fans, it's like, man, we, this is stuff we've always wanted to see everybody come together. I think it's getting great. No, no, I I agree. See, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I disagree with what, or I disagreed with what those people were saying. Now, right, right. now, I'm still not on their side. However, I do think that at some point, the ball will drop. Hmm. That you cannot continue making um, just this kind of movie and expecting the same kinds of turnouts, especially since we have Endgame coming up. Everything mm -hmm. we know from the past 10 years has been leading to this point. Yeah. 
it's possible yeah. that people will go, okay, okay, that was good. I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's kind of like, well, how can they top themselves after Endgame? Right. Who who the hell? You fought Thanos. You fought against the Infinity Gauntlet. What other challenges? I'm sorry. When Black Panther 2 comes out, is it really going to be that big a deal? Like yeah, who, I see, I see, whoever, I see what you're saying. Whoever the yeah. threat is, are they really going to be that big a deal? If it's just another version of Killmonger, uh, you fought against Thanos' people. Yeah. No, that makes sense, man. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, there there are a lot of supervillains left. You know, uh, you know, Kang's still out there. Doctor Doom's still out there. Galactus. But it's like, yeah, you're right. You know, it's this is. I think this is kind of the. Not saying Thanos is the best, but this. No. Is, this is the best we've had so far. It's like, man, it's it's been a culmination, dude, of of well crafted films leading up to this big event. How the fuck are you gonna top that? I, I don't you're right and, you're right man it's like holy shit and so that's why I'm I'm afraid so when Fantastic Four and X-Men have their own movies under the Marvel banner mm-hmm. I'm I'm thinking geez are people really gonna be fatigued and burned out by this at that point um yeah yeah I I, I want to say you know I want to say no obviously because at the end of the day these are all action movies they're big spectacle action movies. And right. if the Fast and the Furious franchise, which guilty pleasure, I absolutely love, um, <laughs> can continue to make movies that make money, there's really no reason that these can't as well. But I think it might be a good idea for them to scale down their cost a little if they can. Yeah, well, I think it's going to get to the point, too, where... Uh you know, now, of course, it's been different the past few years because, like you said, we've all been leading up to Infinity War, you know, but I think now it's like the MCU's, I, I think I think it's clear the MCU's going to do like a, not necessarily a reset, but it's going to do a course change or course correction into new territory after Endgame, obviously. So I think a lot of fans are going to be like, well, we don't know what to expect now. So, you know, people aren't going to be so... Like, oh my God, I can't wait till this movie comes out. Oh my God. It's like, I don't think it's going to be like that anymore. It's just going to be like, oh, what's the next one? A Black Widow movie? Okay, cool. Yeah, let's go, let's go check it out. You know, it's like, I think the excitement is going to be down just a smidge. Just, I mean, just maybe for a little bit. Maybe, who knows? Maybe they'll start crafting another story that'll take 10 years to culminate to. That'd be cool. But I'm just saying, like, I think you're right, dude. It's going to it's it's gonna go down a bit as far as, you know, after the dust settles with Endgame, you know, yeah, we're... Where do we go? You know, because apparently there, it's not official, but there's rumors that we're getting two movies next year. One of them is heavily rumored to be a Black Widow movie, which I'm fine with, but I think it's about ten years too late. Uh, yeah, should have we should have got that early on when they we were should have after like Iron Man two or the first Avengers, we should have got it. It should have been way too late. Uh, but I think the other movie next year rumored to come out is the Eternals, which I personally am very interested in because I love I do know a little bit about the Eternals and the cosmic side of things from the comics and I'm really interested to see what they could do what kind of doors and pathways that could open up for the MCU because I really think when you go cosmic and universal like that like we saw with the Guardians it really opens up a whole new universe and so I'm excited about the Eternals but um yeah it's just like you know uh where do they go from here and how can they keep the fans excited you know because like you said, once the dust settles, it's like, well, Thanos is coming and gone. The Infinity Gauntlet's coming and gone. That's one of the most popular comic book storylines of all time. So it's like, you know, what do we do from here? But, you know, hey, we'll see, man. Because I know with Spider-Man, you know, obviously we're going to have Tom Holland for a long time. So, you know, eventually down the road they could do the, they could get into the Sinister Six stuff. You know, with, with Black Panther, you could get into the Namor stuff. With the Fantastic Four, you could bring in Doom and Galactus. And finally, for the love of God, they can do them right. Yeah, and uh, you know, Deadpool can come into the mix, and then you could bring in the new X Men. You know, you can redo Apocalypse, bring make him much bigger and badder than he was in the shitty Apocalypse movie. Sorry, I hate that movie. Uh, and um, <laughs> you know, you could do Magneto. I love Magneto. I love Michael Fassbender, but that's what I'm saying. With all these new franchises, you could there's there's a lot more uh, there's a lot more opportunities to do down the road. So I just hope that they concoct a good story and you know they have an idea of how they want to handle because yeah you know you know this the x-men it's that's a 
that's a massive franchise on its own. It's huge. You know, it's it's huge. It's big. It's bigger than the MCU. So it's like they got a lot of stuff to play with. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see, man. Yeah, but I do. It's going uh, to be interesting. I do. I do. Real quick. I <laughs> lately I've been thinking. I feel ba- a little bad for Tom Holland because he's he's still owned by Sony. Yeah. Like Spider-Man. Yeah. Sony still owns Spider-Man. And so I, I, hate, I hate that shit, dude. I hate I, it. I agree, but I it was smart that Sony said, "Hey Marvel, we need your help." Um yes. but it's yes. kind of like Tom Holland kind of shows up. He's like some weird step cousin that shows up with it cuz he's he's playing with the Avengers who are all up under Marvel contract. He's under mm-hmm. Sony contract and he's on set with the Avengers. So it's kind of <laughs> like, "Oh, you're adorable." No, you're not really on the team, but you yeah, are. Yeah. Well, see, I thought it was uh call me crazy, man, but I thought it was a really really big missed opportunity to they should have done something. At least let him have a cameo or something in Venom, you know. I, I know it's a little out of left field, but you, you, you. I feel like you could have done something there. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know. There's, Unless the MCU wants to bring in their own Venom one day down the road, I, I don't really know how that's going to work out. But well, I, I'm sure Sony doesn't want to share all the profits, and they're a movie studio. They want to be able to stand on their own feet. Um, well, they clearly didn't succeed with the Spider-Man movies. I mean, yeah, the first two Raimi films were pretty good, but. It just wasn't working, so that's why I'm glad they gave the rights back to Marvel. But the whole thing they're trying to do now with you know the Venom movie, and now Venom's going to get a sequel, and they're going to start doing all these other Spider-Man villain movies. It's like, well, you need Spider-Man. It's just, just going to get confusing. Yeah, you know, if you don't have Spider-Man, I agree. You know, and then it's like, well, where are we going to have two versions now? Because is the MCU going to do their own Venom one day? You know, in a far from like Spider-Man: Homecoming four or five. You know, it's like. What the hell, dude? Yeah. But I do, I do love that the MCU Spider-Man movies uh, with Vulture and then you got Mysterio coming out. I, I do love that they're doing all new villains. You know, they're not rehashing all the old ones. You know, I, I like this trend, right? So, uh, and, and there's there's a lot of big rumors going around that obviously I, I don't think Norman Osborn is going to be in Far From Home, but there are rumors that his name could be dropped, or you know, then there's the rumor of oh, uh, there might be a nod to the former Avengers Tower in New York getting turned into Oscorp Tower, you know. So I uh, I kind of want to stay away from Green Goblin for now, but obviously at some point you're going to have to bring him into the Homecoming universe. Because oh, yeah. That's one of his greatest villains. But uh, I kind of like that. You know, I kind of want to see eventually, you know, because I think Tom Holland signed on for so many movies, uh, you know, maybe like the third or fourth movie down the road, see, start to see trinklets of the Sinister Six coming in, and you know, because we already have Vulture, we're ha- we're getting Mysterio, and uh, in Homecoming, I know a lot of people were confused about this, but the guy that went to prison, I'm sure you know this, but yeah, Scorpion, yeah, Scorpion. A lot of people probably didn't know that. They're like, well, this is some random inmate. So, uh, you know, he he's around, so it's like, oh shit, maybe they're maybe they could build up to a Sinister Six type thing, and and you know, you could bring in uh, Rhino down the road and. Uh, I know Craven wasn't a part of the Sinister Six. I don't think he was, but he was always a cool villain. So he said, said "Yeah, man, you, you got so." And then, of course, Venom and Carnage. What right. Do do with those, what do you do with those guys? You know, yeah. Since Sony's making their own Venom movie, and they just had a post-credit scene with Carnage in there. Spoiler alert! If anybody hasn't seen that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's 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 going to be interesting, but uh, I I don't know. I don't know. I think we're in for a hard reset after Endgame. We we basically. are. We are, and uh, I, I vote. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I vote no end credit scene after end game. No, I could see that. I could see that. that like that would make sense. Let the fans know this is truly the end of this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That, that 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 makes a lot of sense, man. Now I, I will tell you this: if the deal hadn't gone through and the X Men Fantastic Four Deadpool weren't coming over. Then I'd be a little worried, like, well, fuck, where are they going to go here? Now where are they going to do? Uh, <laughs> you know, so. And Deadpool's another thing. You know, I heard Disney said they're going to continue to make R-rated movies. So I think he's the exception. I, I think you got to bring Ryan Reynolds back, man. Here's the, here's the deal with, with the Deadpool thing. And I've always getting, I read in the comments that people are like, Deadpool's got to be rated R. He's got to be rated R. And I go, why? Yeah, he doesn't because have to be. Yeah. I, I read... I read a lot of Deadpool comic books. 
He's not an R-rated. It's not like he was doing or saying R-rated things in the comics. So why is it necessary in the movies? Like, why did I look? I don't care about it. It's just the adamancy of it, and I'm I'm wondering to those fans, where is this coming from? Right. That he's got to be cussing and it's got to be bloody. I mean, whatever to those things as an adult. But the comics didn't have. Well, they had blood, but they didn't have the cussing in it. So why are you guys fighting so hard for something that never existed in the first place? I don't know where it came from. Yeah. No, it's just, I think it's Ryan Reynolds' humor and the fact that he was, you know, really playing up the whole, oh, fuck me sideways in the ass. That was awesome. It's like, yeah, that's, and that's maybe, cool. It's, it's a good laugh, but sure, that doesn't have to be Deadpool all the time, dude. You could make a PG-13 Deadpool movie. Yeah, I, totally. It's, it's still going to be fine. You know Ryan Reynolds will make it work. Yeah, he absolutely would. And they might. Uh, but, you know, yeah. I, I do think when the MCU, if they do bring back Ryan Reynolds, which I personally, it's 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 a debatable topic, but I personally think he's the lone exception. I think he should stay. I, I really don't see anybody else playing that role better than him. And But I do think if if he does come to the MCU, I do think the, the I do think they'll tone them down just a smidge. Possibly, possibly. When, you know. If they don't, I don't I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either. You know, I'm I'm happy either way. I'm happy with the I'm happy with the the raunchy rated R. I I don't care. I'm cool with a PG-13. I just I love his incarnation of Deadpool. Yes, I agree. And I think with Deadpool having that ability to break the fourth wall, I think that's why he can be the exception. You can bring him over and he can reference that. You yes, know, I, think, I think it works. Totally. You know, so, so we'll see, man. It's it's going to be interesting, dude. But um, yeah, dude. I, I mean, we could talk about this for hours on end, man. But um, let's uh, let's move on to this last part of the show. All right. Uh, I got something for you. It's a. I've been doing this with with the previous guest, and I'm going to continue this. It's going to be a staple <laughs> of the show. Every show, we're going to end the show with a trivia quiz. Oh boy. It's something that we started doing on the indie rundown. We haven't done it in a while. Me and Mike have kind of strayed away from it. I really don't know why. Well, we've been we've been getting a lot of uh we've been getting a lot of out of town guests and out of state guests, which is great because it's been great to connect with other filmmakers that we we don't know locally. But I think, you know, with with more people you don't know, you know, you're less comfortable and you don't Trivia is one thing, you know, when you have your buddies on the show and stuff like that. So so yeah, we've kind of gotten away from it rightfully so, but yeah, I wanted to bring it back for this. So it's it's been going great the past two episodes. So yeah, it's it's going to be a staple. So uh, here here's here's the basics of the quiz. It is a ten question MCU quiz. It's just questions about. It's just a random quiz. Uh, it's got questions from all the movies, uh, not all the movies, but you know, just from the bunch. So some are some are tough, some are easy. You know, we'll see though. We'll see though because. I know you know your shit, so. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can remember like years of. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, all right. He's he's ready. He's ready. Let's let's kick this off, man. All right, ten question MCU quiz. Question number one: Which MCU film did Black Widow make her first appearance in? Iron Man two. Okay. See. 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 Here, this 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 is gonna be cake. This is gonna be cake. <laughs> Okay, let me highlight that as green because you got that right. All right, question two. Which MCU film did Hawkeye make his first appearance in? Thor. One, first go. Thor. Thor one, there you go. Starting off strong, two right. All right, question three. Doctor Strange protects the New York Sanctum, Sanctorum. Where are the other two located? Oh, that's a good one. Um so he's in New York. Uh, China. And. I'm looking for cities, but. Okay. Uh, let, let me let me hear your other. Crap. No, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. I don't even know if China is right. You were getting there. It was Hong Kong and London. Hong Kong and London. Okay. Hong Kong and London. I was yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what I was gonna say. I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to question four. Scarlet Rich's real name is Wanda Maximoff. What is Quicksilver's? Uh, Pietro. Pietro. Perfect. 
Question five. At the beginning of Infinity War, which Infinity Stone does Thanos already possess? He's got the Power Stone. There you go. There you go. Which, by the way, remind me. I want to say something about that after this quiz. Okay. Okay. Which uh, Question six. Which Infinity Stone does Vision have embedded in, in his head? He's got the Mind Stone. There you go. Mind Stone. Let me make a note of that. Power Stone note. Okay. Question seven. How many years was Steve Rogers frozen in ice? Oh, that is a good, good question. Um, so he went in in the 40s. Uh, let's just do some math. What is it, 2000? Which we're not good at. Uh, <laughs> si- was it 64? It was not. It was 70. 70, okay. 70 years. 70 years. I don't know when the... I don't, I don't know when the first yeah. Avenger movie came out. 2012. Okay. Well, that's that one line. Nick Fury says, uh, trouble sleeping? He's like, I slept for 70 years, sir. I have my fill. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A little deep cut question there. but All right. Let's move on to question eight. What is Pepper Potts' first real name? I don't know. I didn't know she had one. You didn't? Uh, no, I had no clue. It's Virginia. Nope. Did I think not. it's in the first Iron Man. Did did not know that. Might have heard that and just went right over my head. I yeah, always thought probably. it was Pepper. Okay. Well, I learned oh, something Pepper's new. Like a nickname. All right. Well, hey, you taught me something new today, too, with the whole rogue Captain Marvel thing. So, you, know, <laughs> hey, you learn shit every day, man. All right. Let's move on to question nine. In Thor the Dark World, which Avenger does Loki briefly take the form of? Captain America. There you go. That was easy as shit. <laughs> All right. Question 10. Another name question. This might be kind of tough because I couldn't remember it at first when I took this quiz. What is the name of Star-Lord's mother? Oh, no. Something Quill. Uh, the poor uh, the poor woman who Jenny. was sabotaged by Ego. Jenny? Jenny? That is incorrect. It is Meredith. Wow. Meredith Quill. Why did you say that name? <laughs> oh, God. Don't go there. <laughs> All right, so you got six four, Ooh. or six right, and four wrong. Ah, oh, that's not a great score. But hey, it's still a passing grade. It is book. a it is a passing grade. That is now, now that that was fun. That was fun. You did a good job, man. Um, little deep cut questions in there with the names and shit. Yeah. But um, hey, real quick, I wanted to touch upon that. I forgot to say that earlier. Here's the thing with the Power Stone, real quick. A lot of people are saying, you know, how I told you earlier. Uh, some of the movie, you know, there's rumors that it might focus on the Avengers going back in time to get some of the stones. Well, I heard a rumor develop uh, on Reddit a few weeks ago. Uh, somebody was talking about the possibility of why didn't they show him getting the Power Stone? Because, you know, that's pretty pretty monumental thing to show up on Xandar and just wreck the Nova Corps and steal the Power Stone. Why didn't we get to see that? I would have loved to have seen that. So, because Troy brought up that question when on, on the show last week. He said, which we didn't get to see it. I said, yeah, I think there's a reason because there's rumors that, you know, what if they revisit that event in Endgame? They go back in time to right before he showed up to get the Power Stone on Xandar and they stop him somehow. So it's like, that could be interesting. That could, could be interesting. That could be interesting. Might, might be reaching, you know, but it, it could be interesting. Yeah, because if, if I were being honest, it was... I never even questioned how he got it until other people had, like after I'd seen the movie and then people were like, yo, why didn't they show that? I went, I thought, oh yeah, they, they didn't. It just kind of happened. Yeah. He just, he just raises up his hand in the very beginning and you see it on his hand or, or the gauntlet. And it's like, yeah. Oh fuck. He already has the power. Wait, what happened to Xandar? And then later, later when Thor's like, well, he stole it last week when he decimated Xandar. And it's like, wait, wh- what? That's he- like, that's like a big event. You just kind of glossed over it. Yeah. Okay. They that's did. That's kind of weird. They did kind of gloss over it. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, like I said, it could be reaching, but that's just a theory that I thought was pretty interesting. Like, you know, who knows? Because it's like really, uh, as last time I remembered, the Nova Corps, they were pretty fucking stacked. I don't really see how he could have. Yes, he's powerful. And yes, his children were powerful, too. But it's like, you mean to tell me they took down the entire fucking Nova Corps and stole the Power Stone? O- okay. Okay. It's kind of strange. Well, I mean, Ronan didn't really have any problems with the Nova Corps ships. Well, that's true. But I, I figured, like, Thanos is a much bigger threat. They probably would have raised their 
I, I agree, but you, I know. you know, there's there, there are a few. There's that's an inconsistency, and you can't really count inconsistencies in movies. But but the Avengers yeah. didn't seem to have that big of a problem with. I mean, except for one character, uh, uh, uh the Maw was the one problem that yeah. they had. The others, mm, I mean, Vision had his trouble, but other than that, he the the other characters they didn't seem to have that big well, of a problem with and thor in ragnarok he finds out oh you don't need the hammer for your powers and so thor just starts yeah, but hang yeah. on then in the beginning of infinity war thor essentially one shot at thanos yeah pretty much with pretty the much. axe but in the <laughs> on the ship thor is chained up like wait a minute what happened to the big show uh right against hella and her her people when he was just like picking up weapons like he right. suddenly <laughs> he lost the lightning like, right 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 he needs exactly, the axe exactly, now exactly yeah so you can you know that's the funny thing about this this sort of thing they they throw in these like well here's this boom yeah exactly exactly and and to touch upon your comment about vision you know, uh, I think I can give Vision a pass because Homeboy did act like a bitch and he stabbed him from behind without Vision knowing. True. You know, I think Vision could have took him any day of the week had he been fully prepared. Because uh, he did seem kind of weak. I mean, what the fuck? Dude just stabs people. That's it. Yeah, I Eb- agree. Ebony Maw was a... was No, no lie. Ebony Maw was an OG. I actually kind of liked his character. Uh, I thought he was a bigger... Th- I thought he was a bigger threat, you know? And he was. Worked. He was the um, biggest that he probably could have been a threat to Thanos, honestly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Loved it, man. Loved it. But, you know, but well, all right, man. Well, I guess that's going to do it, dude. Uh this has been a lot of fun, man. I I really appreciate you um just coming on, dude. It's been, it's been fun to bullshit with you. Oh, heck yeah. yeah I I been cool. I love this stuff. Thank you. Yeah, man. We'll hey, we'll do it again, dude. You know, let's say I think what this show is you know, I, I want to do like a rotating guest panel down the road. Like, hey, if, if this dude can't come on, all right, let me call this dude, see if he's free. Or, you know, we'll play it by ear, man. But, you know, we'll definitely do this again because, you know, there's more movies and shit and comics to talk about. So, oh, yeah. You know, maybe next time we can delve into like DC territory. I don't know if you like DC or not or some <laughs> other Marvel stuff. So there's always stuff to talk about, my man. For sure. For sure. So we'll definitely do it again. And, and you know, you're always welcome on the main show as well if you want to come on. When me and Mike, you know, talk about some other stuff, you're always welcome. So, yeah, I'd love to. Anytime, brother. But, all right, man. Well, uh, yeah, I guess that's going to do it. Uh, Appreciate everybody for listening again. Um, This has been great. Another solid uh, discussion. You know, just uh, be sure to keep, be sure to stay in touch. Follow the show, follow the page, subscribe to everybody, check out Chad's stuff, follow him on Amazon, look at his books. He's got a lot of great books on there um, under the name Anthony Anthony Thaxton. Yes. Don't miss it. And, uh, yeah. I'm Zach. This has been Comic Book Weekly. We're out.